welcome back. We're uh, back in Barrington Tops. We've just done a bit of a bush bash. It's uh, not much of a form trail to find this, essentially, these secret waterfalls. Obviously, you get um, almost nobody comes down here. There's no track, no walking track. Certainly can't drive here. Um, but absolutely amazing spot. Only about a 400 or so meter track, meter walk off the main track. Uh, and if you didn't know where these were, you'd never find them. But absolutely amazing. So I've got the camera set up down here. Um, as you can see, we're down fairly low, uh, trying to get what is these really cool rapids here. And this rock, this rock here is very important. It's going to anchor all this swirling water and create some stability in the image. So I'm using that as sort of a foreground and then obviously up into the background of those cascades. Shooting uh, a landscape orientation at the moment, but I'm going to try a portrait as soon as that sun goes back behind the clouds. And I'll, for portrait, I'll raise the tripod up because at the moment in landscape, you can see that you can't see those falls way up the top there, but that's my eye level there. So that's what I'm going to try and get to when I'm shooting in uh, portrait mode. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get some nice images out of it. Just got to wait for that sun to disappear. I've got the uh, polarizing, the CPL, circular polarizing filter on as well. So um, try and get some of the glare out of the water and I think the sun's just a spoon behind a cloud now so I'm gonna shut up and get into it. Switched into uh, portrait mode now as you can see and I've got the camera pointed a long way down. Uh, reason being I'm not interested in the sky, don't care at all. I want basically my whole scene to be full of all these beautiful cascades leading up into the image. Uh, so I've got the camera pointed a long way down, still using this rock here in the foreground to anchor the image and then obviously that cascade leading up and the beautiful waterfall in the background there. Um, just as I said before, waiting for the perfect moment for the sun to disappear so I can get a nice slowish shutter speed. Because the water's moving so quickly, I don't need like, you know, one, two second shutter speed. Something like 0.4 of a second, maybe a third of a second, something like that is going to be about perfect for this. It's really going to make the water look like it's rushing through. So that's the effect I'm after because that's exactly what it looks like at the moment. A lot of water rushing through. So I hope you can see the difference now. The sun's gone back behind the clouds and those falls look a lot darker, which is obviously a lot better when you're trying to use a slow shutter speed. Um, so I had my aperture all the way down to F22, um, trying to reduce the amount of light available when the sun was sort of peeking through. Now that it's behind the clouds, I've dropped down to F16, which is a lot nicer. Hopefully the image will be a lot sharper as a result of that. Uh, and yeah, much, much better. So cloudy conditions for the wind. So this is where we camped last night. And this is basically the conditions that we had. Rain, sun, rain, sun, rain, sun. Now it's just started raining again. But I'm just going to show you the river we camped by. Nice little section of rapids up there, and then big open section of water over this way. The river's way, way up. Um, it was, as I said, it's been raining, but it's uh, come up again last night, probably probably only another inch or so, but it's, it's probably a foot or two above where it normally would be. I'm getting under cover, it's starting to get heavy. <laughs> So I'm just wandering down to these little rapids down here while the uh, just after that rain's come through obviously there's still a bit of cloud about so I'm just going to grab some photos while those conditions are, are right or the best and hopefully not fall on my bum because it's slippery so these are the rapids you can see through here and then up 
through there. So what I'm thinking is it's going to be hard to show you, but that sort of line through those rocks there is the real line I want to follow. So I'm hoping to use this grass at my feet just here as a bit of an anchor and set up down here, possibly down here in the water. So I've got the polarising lens on and I've also got the hood on just in case it starts to drizzle again, just to keep the uh, rain off, off the lens. What I've found when photographing uh, fast flowing water like this is today because it's basically in flood, um, it's so, so easy to blow out the highlights of the white water. Uh, even your histogram, which I rely on a lot in landscape photography, won't pick up uh, that there's some overblown highlights. So I always dial it back a little bit from what I think is the right exposure um, and make it a darker exposure than I think it should be. Um, either that or I'll always bracket and take a darker exposure just to say, just to cover myself in case I need it later. Um, what that means is you, it's harder to get the milky effect because you're using a slightly shut, or if you have to adjust the shutter speed, you, it's harder to get that milky effect because you're uh, using a slightly shutter, faster shutter speed. Um, but with the water flowing this quickly, if I use anything too slow, the whole river would just look like milk and be ruined. So I really want to show the turbulence and all that. So I think similar to yesterday, yeah, I'm using about one sixth of a second, um, which is about right to show the movement as well as the texture of the water and not just smooth it all out. So, and that F13, ISO 64. Uh, my camera is telling me that I'm about 1.7 stops below optimal exposure. So as I said, that's darker than it should be. Um, but that's so I don't overblow those highlights in that white water. I've just done a uh, quick little focus back here as well because this grass in front that I'm using as my sort of anchor for the foreground um, is only maybe 600 mil off the front of the lens. So I'm focus stacking on that, on the rocks out there and then on the far rock way out there. Uh, hopefully give me a nice sharp image all the way through. What I've done now is uh, I've dropped the tripod height right down, as you can see down there. Um, and the reason I've done that is uh, I had it sort of maybe a foot higher than it was. Um, and I just wasn't getting the angle right of the water coming into the scene. So I thought I'll drop it, bring it closer to the water. That way the water's going to be coming in the bottom of the image rather than just from the side um, and look nicer flowing up into the image.